Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to use these scissors with a, a rounded middle, but um, you could use a razor blade or anything like that. And we're just going to score gently around the outside until we feel it get through to the braid. And usually it will start to feel a bit rough as it uh, cuts through and starts touching the braid. And then we're going to gently lever the outer off. So here we are with the braid, and this is a very dense braid, this particular one. Very nice. Uh, I don't know if it's focusing here, it doesn't look like it is. I'll just see if we can get it to focus. As you can see, there's no holes through the braid. It's really tight weave, which is what you want. Just see if we can get this a bit clearer. Not really. As you can see though, it's nice and dense. Right, so we've got the back nut, the washer, the gland. <clears throat> We're now going to put the top washer on. This is going to go over the braid, so I'll just smooth out the braid. We're going to lower it over carefully so we don't end up in a mess. Here we go. And now we're going to fold the braid back, carefully splaying it here. And this is going to lie horizontally now over the top of that top washer. And that's the point of this washer. It's going to give a really tight clamp. Now what I recommend you do is feather this out <coughs> horizontally so that all the wires are standing straight out. Okay. So I want to keep going and really tease it out, un unbraid it. The reason being we're going to want to cut this off flush in a second and if it is curved later on it might splay out and start shorting something out so I'd recommend teasing this out as wide as possible like so. Okay now I'm going to go around the edge carefully with the scissors and just trim this off. This is a bit messy. Once we get all the way around we're ready for the next step. Pardon me for reaching around here. Okay so, there we go, we've got the braid folded back over the top washer, okay, that's pretty neat, just a little bit there, and what I tend to do is I'll wiggle it one way then wiggle it the other and you'll find it does stick out when you're pushing it a particular way. And that will help you trim it off <clears throat> so it doesn't happen later. There. Right. So the next step is, and this is a tricky one, we've got to force the top hat compression ring, which is this, over the top here. And we want it to seat down between the braid and the inner dielectric. <clears throat> now in order to do that, what I tend to do is get a small spanner. This one is a 10 mil spanner. And I put it over the top so I can really push hard and I'm not gonna push or bend anything else, okay? So in we go. <clears throat> I'll let you know now, this is not easy. <laughs> it is not easy. But it gives you a very tight clamp on that outer braid. Okay, so there we go. So we've got a sandwich layer here between the two, wa uh, sorry, the washer and the top hat compression. Let's just string that up a bit, there we go. <clears throat> we've then got the uh, rubber gland, the lower washer here. And the back nut. Okay. So at this point, we're going to trim off the outer, the dielectric here, down to the core conductor. And I'll do that with a, <coughs> a razor blade actually, because I've found a firm push through will get you right to the core without cutting too far. So I'm just pushing here 
and then rotating and pushing again and rotating again and pushing again and it just takes a fairly firm push and that gets you right through and what we're wanting to do is to cut this um, flush down to the inner conductor apologies for keep going off screen it uh, takes a bit of force and I don't want to lose a finger so just getting in the right position so I'm just circling around here <clears throat> If you get the right angle, it's pretty easy to just push right through to the centre. Okay, once we've done that all the way round, this should just pull off fairly easily. And in order to do that, I've got a pair of pliers here. Just any old pliers will do, really. Or sort of channel locks, I suppose you call them. And I'm just going to work that back and forth to pull it off. Okay, so side wiggling side to side. Let's try these actually. This one. I'm just going to grasp it. There we go. Okay, so I just slid that off by grabbing it underneath and pushing it forward. Right, so there we have it, the inner conductor. So everything's on here now, ready to go. The final step is to put the body on the connector, like so. Just making sure it comes through the top here. Again, I'm not quite sure what the focusing's like. You should, should just be able to see it poking through, which is ideal. And what I'm going to do is do up the conductor, uh, excuse me, the back nut here and clamp it all down tight and then we're going to solder the inner there. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to hold it with my spanner and the tools there. Actually this is a bigger size, this is 17 mil. So around we go. I can try to do this so you can see it on camera. So I'm holding the body still and I'm rotating the nut until it's very firm. I'm not necessarily trying to you know go crazy, but if it feels solid, we're there. Okay, and again if you can see which I don't know if you can here. I'll just see if I can get the camera to focus. Doesn't like it that close, to be honest. You may be able to see the, the core is just getting ready to poke out the top of the center hole there. And then the final step is to solder this. So I've got a solder iron hot and ready to go, because I've been doing a couple this morning. I'm going to heat the center conductor there and as I'm heating it I'm going to start feeding in some solder okay and then as that's going on we should get a, a nice connection I would recommend clamping this down to hold it still if you can but as I've got nothing to clamp it down at the moment I'm just going to try and bend it such that it does stay still okay so here we go Gonna wet our soldering iron. Place this in the connector. And you want more more rather than less solder in here, <clears throat> just to uh, make it as good a connection as possible. So just bear with me one second and we'll be done.
As you heat this, you'll notice that eventually the solder will wick down into the hole and you'll have a good connection. Okay, so here we go. There's the finished product. Again, a bit tricky to see, but uh, if you can see, the solder has filled the hole. I've put plenty in, so it'll have gone down and secured it all the way in. And it's filled the hole to the top, so we can't get any water in there, hopefully, and pooling and rusting. Um, this, if it, partic particularly if it's going to be an outside conductor uh, connector, sorry, this is going to be outside. You want to fill that hole as best you can. Okay, so there we go. And that's a patch lead. Now I've done uh, for one of my uh, little jobs, and that's it. Thank you very much. So that's an SA two three nine clamp type connector very good and the waterproof particularly at this end SO239s aren't very waterproof at the top but uh, N types which we'll do a video on shortly uh, are so uh, I would recommend an N type if it's going to be outside thank you